Hello? Yes, works. So, our next speaker comes from London. It's uh, David Aguari, and it will speak about TPM2 on Embedded. Let's applaud him. Hey. Can I turn off the light? What are the lights? Sorry. Excuse me, excuse me. Where is the light? Switch. Let's. Uh... Yeah, otherwise, I don't think. They... Yeah. Cool. Here you are. Thank you very much. So, hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. I'm Davide. Uh, I'm a production engineer uh, at London. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about TPM 2.0 and specifically a practical usage on an embedded platform. Can, by the way, I have the platform with me. So, just to show you this, it's really small. And so the agenda is quite short because this is, of course, a lightning talk. We're going to see what is a TPM. This is a very high-level overview of TPMs. Um, and you know how to use a TPM on a min-numbered max or tarbot uh, with a practical example. So we are going to generate a signing key on the, TP, on, on the TPM embedded in these um, platforms and sign a document and verify it with OpenSSL on a different platform. So, What's a TPM? TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module. Uh, its specification has been written by the TCG, the Trusted Computing Group. Uh, Whose members are AMD, Hewlett Packard, IBM, Intel, and Microsoft. And has been standardized in an ISO document. This is 2009 TPM 1.2, by the way. And it presently is on most computer platform, including embedded ones. And by the way, very recently, Microsoft has mandated TPM 2.0 for Windows Mobile 10 platforms and is recommended for server platforms. So we are going to see these devices more and more in the future. Uh, TPM is a cryptographic uh, processor, but it is not an accelerator. This could be shocking. Um, believe it or not, it's slow by design. One of the reasons, one of the main reasons why it is uh, slow is because of import-export restrictions that are on uh, cryptographic technology. Some countries have these restrictions, like the United States, for instance. So at a very high level, um, these are the modules uh, that you can find in a, in a TPM. So we have an input-output module, of course, cryptographic processing, non-volatile storage, or general purpose memory. Basically, we can create <coughs> objects on the TPM, like signature keys or you know, for symmetric and asymmetric encryption, for instance, and we can make them persistent. Of course, this is limited storage, so um, not many keys can be, uh, can be stored in it. Main differences, so we have two versions of TPMs, 1.2 and 2.0 uh, are the two existing version, and TPM 1.2 uh, uses RSA as um, asymmetric encryption and SHA-1 as the hash uh, function, so this is deprecated, although the use of the SHA-1 in the TPM is not uh, you know, affected by the, the recent vulnerability uh, they discovered. And uh, while TPM 2.0 uh, has support for uh, elliptical cryptography and SHA-2, um, but the, one of the, of the most interesting characteristics of TPM 2.0 is what is called algorithm agility. So that means that we can add more algorithms without changing the specification. And that means that maybe with a software, with a firmware upgrade from the vendor, you can get more algorithms on your TPM without changing the, you know, the platform. Um, the main usages, three of the main usages of TPMs uh, are summarized here. So we have platform integrity, so secure boot and trusted boot. This answer the question, answers the question, is a computer platform in a trusted state, in a trusted condition? That means that we have to measure all the software uh, run 
from power on to operating system up and running. And basically, this is uh, done by um, so um, cre creating a hash for each piece of software and storing it in, in TPM registers. Another typical usage is disk encryption. It's not the TPM that performs the encryption, but rather it just stores the key and controls the access to it. And DRM is another uh, usage. There are three types of TPMs, hardware, firmware, and software. The hardware or discrete TPM is a physical component, tamper-proof, and it's the most secure, of course, of the three. The firmware TPM is typical on embedded platforms because it relies only on a um, CPU extensions named Trusted Execution Engine. Uh, and the last one, software TPMs are used just for development. Of course, they are all in user space and, and run, run on top of the operating system. So uh, how can we use a TPM 2.0? For 1.2, the support is pretty, is pretty good, I would say. But for 2.0, the software is not so, uh, you know, not so mature. So um, in order to use it on x86 platforms in Linux, uh, we have two options. One is the IBM implementation. The other one is the Intel implementation. There are a few differences between the, the two. The main are summarized here. Basically, um, the IBM implementation doesn't have the resource manager, which is the component uh, is described in the TCG specification, responsible for allowing multiple process to access the same TPM uh, you know, in time sharing, in a time sharing fashion. And um, so the, TP, the um, TSS from Intel do have a, a, a resource manager, does have a resource manager, and they are working also in, in kernel resource manager, aimed for the kernel 4.11. Uh, also, the Intel implementation is developed on GitHub, so I would say the development is more open and a bit more, uh, you know, modern, maybe. Hardware. So uh, we are talking about embedded platforms. So I have here a Minonboard Max. Um, you, so this is what, what I'm going to show is actually exactly the same on Minonboard Tarbot, which is a spin-off on the Minonboard Max. Uh, basically, it's a dual-core ADOM uh, that supports the, trust, the trusted execution environment, and so we can get a firmware TPM. Um, the firmware TPM is not there by, the, I mean, with the with embedded um, UFI firmware, but you have to refresh uh, the uh, the firmware, and there are instructions at the end of this slide. There is, there is a link to a post explaining how to do this. It's not too hard. This platform costs around 150 uh, euros. Of course, this is just an example. There are many other platforms that support this. Um, uh, so firmware TPM in this case. Using TPM 2.0, regardless of the type, in real world is not easy because it doesn't support the tools, the existing tooling for x86 and Linux, at least the open source uh, one. I'm not aware of uh, you know, um, closed source implementation at the moment. Um, it's hard because they don't support uh, interchange format like DER or PEM, and so using it with OpenSSL, is, it's not possible uh, straight away. Uh, but both the, uh, the TPM software stacks provide an API. Uh, they implement what is called in the specification the system API, which can be used to, to build your own C, C++ application. Although the specification uh, is quite hard to digest. so. I'm, what I'm showing here is pretty hacky, but of course it, there are cleaner way to do that. But I mean, it's not easy. Um, so, in order to use the Minonboard Max to do what I'm showing, we need to enable the firmware TPM, as I mentioned. We need to set up a Linux distribution. Um, any dis recent distribution will do. Will do, but you need at least kernel 4.4. I believe 4.2 is works as well. But anyway, 4.4 is better. Um, you need to flash it onto a micro SD card, boot the board from it, with it, sorry, and install the TPM software stack and the TPM tools from Intel. Uh, there are pointers at the end of this uh, presentation, so you can find the software easily. If you're lucky, some distribution like OpenSUSE already uh, have packages from, for these two um, softwares. You need to start the resource manager as a, dem as a demon, sorry, and then you're right, and you do a, you're good to go. So, Intel tools. Um, are modeled after a security, uh, I would say, protocol uh, described in the in the in the CCG specification, which is, you know, it's focused on TPM 1.2. For 2.0, we have much more flexibility. Although the the existing tools won't allow you to create to create a primary key 
for uh, you know for assigning key as a primary key. So we have to create an endorsement key, and from this key we are going to create an uh, um, attestation identity key that can be used for signing something. The, if you use directly with the C API the the the, 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 the TPM software stack, you don't need to to do this, of course. So uh, this command generate, if, if it's not already uh, stored in the non-volatile memory, will generate a new key, RSA key, um, 256 bytes long, and we store it in AK, ek.pub. We don't need this key, but as I said, we need to generate another key called uh, the session identity key from the uh, endorsement key just created. Uh, this key will be stored in, uh, uh, in the file uh, aikey.pub, but it can be used directly by OpenSSL because it's uh, basically it's a dump of a C structure described in the in the in the TCG standard. We need to extract the modulus from that key, and this is done by skipping the first 102 bytes. And then we need to create a fixed header. This header is fixed, of course, it's a dead header fixed for RSA keys, of course. And a mid header, which is just metadata describing uh, how the exponent uh, looks like. So basically, it's saying it's a three it's a three bytes integer. And then, when we have all these all these bits, we can compose them into the into a um, public key, which can be used by OpenSSL in that format. You can convert it in PEM format if you if you like at this point. Then we need to sign. Then we sign a document, and with the uh, exported public key, we can uh, verify it. And to do that, uh, we use these two commands. So as usual, we hash a message, and then we sign it. In order to do this, you, you can use these two commands. But there is a sort of, I would say, bug in the Intel tooling, uh, which uh, actually requires you to pass the message to the sign command. This is not needed, of course. You just, in a, you know, if. Uh, in the right implementation, you just need to pass the hash. Uh, you can see we are using a ticket.bin file. So this is interesting for TPMs 2.0 because it's the way it, uh, you can offload um, multiple, you know, multiple uh, steps operation. And basically, you can sign only objects that are generated inside the TPM. And to prove that what you're passing to the TPM, to the sign command, is something that has been generated by the TPM, you generate this ticket, which is an HMAC containing the proof that you know that, that specific TPM has generated uh, the hash in this case. And so now we have the signature, which is un, uh, unfortunately not in the right format. So we need to extract to skip again uh, the, this header described in the TCG standard. And we extract the row signature, which is 256 bytes long, of course. It's an RSA 2048 bits key uh, that we are using. And then we can, on a different platform, we can uh, verify the, 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 the signature, with, for instance, with OpenSSL. So, um, of course, this is, as I say, this hacky, um, but this can be used to, uh, you know, to verify. Let's say you have a fleet of these devices, you can actually identify any, uh, so every single device in your fleet uh, with with this with this method with a TPM, because you can sign something and you can, let's say, announce, and you can uh, authenticate your devices in this way with embedded TPM. So thanks for your time and your attention. These are the links I mentioned. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the talk. Do someone has a quick question? If you have any questions, feel free to, to drop me an email because we just scratched the surface of you know this. Thanks. Hello.